Now, one of the biggest characteristics of watchmaking that I think is working in its favor is just the fact that for a collector, you have many ways to get drawn into the hobby, whether it's through the history, the mechanics behind the movements, or through the design and dial making that's taking place with a lot of the watches. However, when we're looking at watches and dial making specifically, something that I'm usually drawn to the most in terms of watches, the prices can kind of start getting crazy as you see more worksmanship go into them. But today we're looking at two different Seiko watches, the SRP B77 and SRP D37, probably the best dials that you can find for $400. Now, when it comes to looking at all the affordable watches, especially within Seiko's catalog, Seiko cocktail times are probably some of the best out there and very distinctive in separating from the rest of the lineup. The line provides more distinguished looks that can sometimes be missing from more affordable Seiko 5s while offering more dressy undertones than that of many popular Seiko Sarbs. The Cocktail Times original release was back in 2010, and the watches, like the name suggests, were made to reflect the different design undertones of popular cocktails, being designed with contributed input from one of Japan's top bartenders. In the past decade, the watches have become a staple in Seiko's catalog, being great value for money pieces with the recognizable textured dials. But let's take a closer look at these two models that we have here today. First, the SRPB77, coming with a silver dial and a blue handset, and the SRPD37, coming with a green dial. Both of these watches have a case size of 40.5 millimeters, thickness of 12 millimeters, lug width of 20 millimeters, lug to lug of 47.2 millimeters, movement is an automatic Seiko 4R35, water resistance of 50 meters, and both of them have a hard lex crystal. The watches themselves on the wrist work consistently with their 40.5 millimeter cases, which do have a bit of presence, yet wear flat enough given their 12 millimeters of thickness, allowing them to slide underneath dress cuffs during dressier scenarios. Are the watches as universal in their wearing experience as say the Seiko Sarb 033 for example, especially for a couple of watches that will lean more dressy? No. And would it be great to see these in slightly smaller case sizes? Certainly, but I think the wearing experience is still quite exceptional on my six and a quarter inch wrist for 15.9 centimeters. The cases come in a consistent high polish and both the watches have a large six and a half millimeter crown that serves useful in setting the time, date, or winding the watch at the appropriate position despite extending out from the case quite a bit. Jumping back to the thickness of these pieces, much of this is coming from the Hardlex crystal that has a prevalent dome here and really does just look fantastic underneath the macro lens. Now, the idea of having a Hardlex crystal here, I think could be contested depending on what kind of wearer you are. I think because these are dressier watches, you don't probably have to worry about this as much as you would if this was a little bit more of an everyday style piece. Uh, however, these are going to scratch up if you're gonna start banging these things around. And I know they do as of, uh, you know, with, after long times of wearing these things, that, that definitely does happen. Uh, but I think what is achieved here with the Hardlex, with the doming of it uh, for this price range, I think for me, I'm actually in favor of it. Uh, because I don't think the sapphire crystal here, if it was chosen, would really have the same kind of domed effects. Sapphire to me sometimes just looks a little bit flat and usually costs a little bit more to kind of give it kind of that box sapphire type of look. On both the watches, we have two separate approaches towards the bracelet and strap. On the SRPB77, we have a five link bracelet. There's one of the comfier bracelets of any Seiko watch out there, especially from the affordable price tier, as I know from personal experience, this one holds up quite well after consistent wear. The bracelet meets at a dual button release at the underside and tapers ever so slightly. It does have the absence of micro adjustment points, yet it's still a nice bracelet that I think is worth getting in the models from the cocktail times as the 20 millimeter lug width as well as any time that you maybe are a little bit tired of it, you could take advantage of that very versatile lug width. On the other side, the green dial SRPD37 features a brown leather strap on a deployant buckle that pairs well with the rich tone of the impressive dial. Now with all this talk of dials in the title of this video, it probably makes sense that we take a little deeper look at both of them. And really the only difference here is essentially the color. Both watches exhibit the use of applied polish hour indices raised from the textured finished canvas the dial offers. 
At the 12, we have an applied Seiko logo, the writing of Presage Automatic at the six, and then both the watches feature small minute markings along the outside of the dial and an outline date window at the three. And as another note, the SRPB77 with the silver dial has a white date disc and the SRPD37 features a black date disc. And on the subject of, I think both of these serve really well in working in unison with the dial colors. At the center of these watches, the eye-catching nature is followed with nicely executed Dauphine-style hour and minute hands, and thin second hand with a unique hollowed-out diamond counterweight. Yet one of the most appealing characteristics of the Cocktail Time series to me is the different experience that each dial color has in bringing out the most of the rib finish dial here. And this is the dial surface that I don't think could be fully appreciated until you really look at it up close. As since I've been covering many watches of different price tiers, trying to improve my macro shots as well, you start to notice the small details, especially in affordable pieces that end up making them, well, affordable. But these Presage models don't fall victim to the usual shortcomings. In fact, these watches give multiples of their price a run for their money in terms of dial finishing with their excellent yet eye-catching sunray style texture that can be seen from the naked eye, but that just merely starts to tell the story here. As within, one can begin to notice the ever so subtle slim ribbing on the dial surface that becomes more clear upon closer inspection. Flipping the watch over, we have an open case back providing view of the automatic Seiko 4R35B. This movement has become a popular caliber that resides in the higher end Seiko 5 models, the Seiko Prospect series, and of course in the many models within the Presage family. Despite the nice touch of color that makes its way onto the rotor here, the movement doesn't perhaps reflect the same beauty as seen on the front of the watch. But all considered here, we have a solid movement for the money. The movement operates at 21,600 vibrations per hour, three hertz, has an accuracy of minus 35 seconds to plus 45 seconds a day, but that is incredibly conservative. Both of these are running within 10 seconds of perfect time a day and are very easy to regulate as well. The movement is hackable as well, so you can stop the seconds hand when trying to set the time and also feature hand winding capabilities and then has a power reserve of 41 hours. Despite the many watches that make up Seiko's entire catalog, I would say that the Seiko cocktail times are probably some of the most recognizable out there with their distinct looks. As underneath the hood, you're getting what you need, simplicity and function. While providing a dial that begins to show its true colors, leading to mesmerizing stares and thoughts of, hmm, 400 bucks, it's quite a nice looking watch. So guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, really would appreciate that as that really helps out the channel. Also, what are your thoughts on the Seiko Presage, the cocktail times? Love to see comments down below. I, I think for me, just generally, these are fantastic watches for the money. Definitely would recommend them. Uh, the only thing is, uh, I think for, you have that a lot of people that $400 Hardlex Crystal might be a little bit difficult. I think uh, the sizing as well is probably the main thing for me. 40.5 millimeters is a little bit large here. The crown's a little bit big. So I know that this thing, uh, in terms of the sizing of these, scales down quite well. My girlfriend has an SRRY025, which is essentially in terms of what you're getting from a dial finishing standpoint, the same thing at around 33, 34 millimeters. So I know if they maybe split the difference there, it'd be a really killer watch. But I'd love to see comments down below. What do you guys think? What would you like to see from the future from this line? Also, if you wanna stay up to date with giveaways, uh, what's going on with me, upcoming videos, be sure to follow me on Instagram as I'm also posting some great photos of watches. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.